Happy Friday, everybody. The weekend <clears throat> is finally here. Well, a few more hours, and it'll be here officially. But hey, it's Friday. You know, better than hell of a lot better than Monday. This is our week 10 preview. We're going to go over everything that's uh, coming up this weekend. Was going to do this show yesterday so we get the Thursday night game in. But you know what they say you plan your life, plan on doing things, and then life happens. And well, that's why we're doing it today. Anyway, like I said, week 10 preview. We got some news items to get to. Uh, before we start, hit that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything. With it, let's get started. Unfortunately, uh, first couple of stories are some sad news. Uh, former South Dakota Coyotes women's basketball player Bridget Schum Schumacher uh, passed away at age 30. Uh, they said passed away unexpectedly uh, at the hospital. So I don't know if she was sick and or she had some kind of procedure and, and things went bad. But uh, she was married with a child, uh, at least one child I know of. So, uh, and that's 30 years old. That is just way too damn young. Uh, prayers to her and her family and friends and everybody. That's just uh, sad. And also former Texas A&M baseball player Mike Easley. He passed away at the age of 57. He had some uh, heart issues. Uh, I'm in my 50s, early 50s, and there's a lot of people, uh, people I know too from high school, that are passing away in their 50s with uh, heart problems. Uh, maybe I should go get that checked out because uh, it seems to be happening a lot, uh, unfortunately. But anyway, uh, yeah, prayers to him and his family and all his friends. Man, just 57, that's young too. And today... Today, today, I mean, in this world today, yeah, that's just too, too young, man. So, man, God bless both of them. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Georgia Tech associate head coach for special teams, Ricky Brumfield. He's been dismissed from the team. Uh, West Virginia, D.C., Jordan Leslie. He is out. Jeff Kuhn will take his place. Uh, Virginia basketball player John Morley. He enters the transfer portal. He was a, he actually was at Florida State for the last couple of years, I believe. Uh, then he transferred to Virginia in May. And then, you know, I guess he's transferring because, again, because a uh, member of Virginia's longtime coach just retired. Kind of unexpectedly, a, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks ago maybe it was. Something like that. All right, so uh, this week, like I said before, that time of year, we've got games in the middle of the week. Uh, Tuesday, Florida International beat New Mexico State 34-13. Kayon Jenkins for Florida International, 338 yards, four touchdowns. Three of them to Eric Rivers, who had 295 receiving yards and 11 catches. Uh, hell of a game for those two guys. And also, their kicker, Prado, 10 points. Man, he had a hell of a game, too. Uh, Louisiana, they moved to 7-1, beat Texas State 23-17. Bobcats started off good. Uh, remember, they gave Arizona a hell of a game. Was that second week? I think it was third week. They're four and four now. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Sam Houston, they're doing good. They're seven and two. Beat Louisiana Tech uh, nine to three, like a baseball game or something. Louisiana Tech did have four turnovers in this game, so that didn't help their cause any. Uh, Wednesday, Jacksonville State five and three beat Liberty, who's five and two now, thirty one twenty one. Trey Stewart, Trey Stewart for Jacksonville State, 232 rushing yards, four freaking touchdowns. Man, hell of a game for him. Uh, Western Kentucky, they're 6-2, beat Kennesaw State, 31-14. Caden Veltkamp for Western Kentucky, 276 passing yards, three touchdowns. Nice game for him, too. Uh, last night, <clears throat> Tulane and Charlotte start off really, really slow. Looked like a baseball game at first. But Tulane came around, beat Charlotte 34-3. to They are 7-2 now. They're running back uh, Maki Hughes, 112 rushing yards, two touchdowns in that game. And then we had an FCS game. South Carolina State, they are 6-2 now. They beat North Carolina Central 24-21. All right, so goes on to tonight. 6 p.m., CBS Sports Network, 2-5 Georgia State versus 5-3 UConn. I put this one down because Utah, UConn has had such bad seasons the last couple seasons. They're just one win away from bowl eligibility. They could get it tonight against 2-5 and five Georgia State. 
Uh, 6.30 on ESPN2, 3 and 4, South Florida versus 2 and 5, Florida Atlantic. Put that one up because interstate rivalry could be a good game. Who knows? Uh, 7 p.m. on FS1, 3 and 4, San Diego State versus number 15, 6 and 1, Boise State. Uh, Boise State quarterback Maddox Masson. 1,482 passing yards, 13 touchdowns. If that wasn't good enough, running back Ashton Gentry, who everybody's talking about, 1,376 yards, 18 touchdowns. Makes you wonder how the hell they lose that one game, doesn't it? That's crazy. Uh, okay, so going to Saturday, 11 a.m., CBS. This is usually a good game. 1-6 Air Force versus number 21, 7-0 Army. I put it down because service academies, those guys want the bragging rights bad. Uh, and it's true. The, you know, they always hear the cliche, throw out the records, it's a rivalry game. A lot of times that ain't true because one team sucks bad, and the other one's great. These guys always battle it out. It doesn't matter if it's Army, Air Force, or Navy. Always have a good game, so you never know what's going to happen. Not going to say it's going to happen, but Air Force could hand Navy or Army their first loss because, like I said, these guys always battle it out. Uh, 11 a.m. ESPNU, 5-3 Toledo versus 5-3 Eastern Michigan. Toledo quarterback Tucker Gleason, 1,645 passing yards, 15 touchdowns. Um, only six interceptions. Wide receiver uh, Jerjon Newton, 745 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns. Eastern Michigan quarterback Cole Snyder, 1,814 yards, 9 touchdowns. They could be battling it out in the air. Uh, six, uh, what was it? 11 a.m. ABC. This could be a pretty good game. Six and two Duke versus number five, eight and no Miami. Both have great passing games. Both have great rushing games. Manny Diaz making his return to Miami where he was coaching didn't do very good. Uh, Hurricanes, they've had some close games. Remember the Virginia Tech game? And then uh, I forget who the other one was, but very close games. They prove, I mean, they came out on top, but they have shown they can possibly be beaten, and Duke is a good team, so, I mean, you never know. Uh, 11 a.m., CW Network, 5-3 and three, Virginia Tech versus 5-2 and two, Syracuse. Virginia Tech, better rushing game. Syracuse is the better passing game. Good ACC battle. Try to get bowl eligible. 11 a.m., ESPN, number 19, 6-2 and two, Ole Miss versus 5-3 and three, Arkansas. Um... These teams are actually pretty even in the rushing and the passing game. As we've seen, Arkansas, they are a lot more improved. Remember they had that great game against Oklahoma State? And then they kind of fell down a little bit. But, man, they're they're doing good now. They're, this could be a good game here. Uh, 11 a.m., ESPN2, 7-1 Memphis versus 3-5 UTSA. Memphis quarterback Seth Hannigan, 2,078 passing yards, 12 touchdowns. UTSA quarterback, Owen McGowan, 2,084 yards, 16 touchdowns. You see that, and you see their record, 3-5. Uh, and five. He's like, is he the only good player on UTSA's team? I mean, with numbers like that, you expect they only have one, maybe two losses. But college football is just crazy, isn't it? Uh, 11 a.m. on Fox. <clears throat> really looking forward to this one. Number four, six and one, Ohio State versus number three, seven and zero, Penn State. These teams are pretty even in the passing game. Both rushing games are eh, they're okay, but not the best. Um, I think I saw Drew Aller's going to play for Penn State. Ohio State doesn't seem to have the power that they've had the last couple of years. I mean, look what happened with Nebraska. Uh, got beat by Oregon. This could be Penn State's year. Remember, people are always on James Franklin. He wins, but when he hits Michigan and Penn, or in Ohio State, forget it. He loses. Uh, this could be the year he beats them. Not saying this happening, but hey, they're playing in the Happy Valley. Uh, if Drew Aller plays, man, they might win this one. Uh, 11 a.m. on FS1, 5 and 3 Minnesota versus number 24, 6 and 2 Illinois. These teams are even in passing and rushing. Uh, Brett Bielema is 10 and 0 versus. Minnesota, going back to his days at Wisconsin. Uh, Minnesota's much improved, but I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, 11.45, SEC Network, 5-3 and three Vanderbilt versus 3-5 and five Auburn. Vandy coming off that tough loss to Texas. Almost beat them. 
And then Auburn coming off a win, so they got confidence. Could be an interesting game. 230 ABC, 4 and 3 Florida versus number 2, 6 and 1 Georgia. Classic rivalry. I'll go ahead and say it. World's largest outdoor cocktail party, which for some reason they don't want to say on TV anymore. Um, several weeks ago, a few weeks back in September, I would have said, dude, don't even worry at this game. Florida's not any good. Georgia is going to beat them. But as we've seen, Georgia is not the Georgia that we've seen the last few years. And Florida has gotten better as the year's gone on. Plus, like I said, rivalry game, this could be this could be a good game. Uh, 230 on ESPN Plus, 5 and 2 UL Monroe versus 4 and 3 Marshall. Even in the passing and rushing game, UL Monroe, they are on a roll this year. They're having a hell of a season. Uh, 230 on ESPN, 5 and 3 Texas Tech versus number 11, 7 and 0 Iowa State. Texas Tech has won three straight, and they do have a better rushing and passing game. And this, uh, always a good, that's a pretty good game all every year in the Big 12. 230 on CBS, number one, eight and no Oregon versus five and three Michigan. Will Michigan put up a fight? That's the big story. Um, CBS is already, oh, look at the big game we got on Saturday. I'm like, well, who knows? It could be. Uh, 230 on Peacock, 13, number 13, eight and no Indiana versus four and four Michigan State. Michigan State upset Iowa. Remember that? Um, they would love to upset Indiana. And, as of this writing, not sure if Rourke is going to play for Indiana, but they do got a good backup. I mean, they do. Uh, 6 p.m. on FS1, 5-2 and two Arizona State versus 3-5 and five Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State better passing, Arizona State better rushing. I mean, Cowboys, they got to break this losing streak sometime, right? I mean, they really do. Uh, they You just wouldn't think they'd, they'd go this far without winning a game. I mean, they gave BYU a hell of a game, so... This could be it. They could break it with Arizona State. You never know. 6.30 on ESPN. 5-3 Louisville versus number 11. 6-1 Clemson. Both these teams are pretty even in the passing and the rushing game. 6.30 on ABC. Number 10. 7-1 Texas A&M versus 4-3 South Carolina. Gamecocks, they're a good team. They just kind of, you know what, themselves in the foot these, some, of, some of these games this year. Uh, blew out Oklahoma, though. Remember that a couple weeks ago? Uh, mediocre passing games. The run games are close. I think the difference here is if A&M can start, starts read, I think they'll win this game. Uh, not guaranteeing it, but I think they can. South Carolina's a good team at home at night in williams Bryce. That is a hard place to play. Uh, being an Aggie fan, I said they're probably going to lose two or three. This could be the second game they lose. I hope not. Because I want them to win, but this could be the second game they lose. Uh, Six thirty ESPNU five and three Georgia Southern versus four and four South Alabama. Two good passing games against two good rushing games. So maybe check out that one. Six thirty on NBC five and three Wisconsin versus five and three Iowa. Um, Wisconsin they're slowly starting to go up. Iowa's starting to fall a little bit. I mean we've seen it happen. Uh, even passing game, Iowa is a little better in the rushing game. 6.30 on uh, Big Ten Network, USC versus Washington. <laughs> Old Pac-10, Pac-12 rival. Uh, both are 4-4. Four and four. Uh, They're pretty even in the rushing and the passing games. Both desperately want to salvage the season that uh, has really gone south. I mean, it really has for both of them. 7 p.m. on ESPN2, 5-3 TCU versus 4-4 four four Baylor. Bears keep getting better and better each week. They really do. Uh, even passing and rushing game, two Texas teams in, in the Big 12. Pretty good. I'm not going to say they're rival rivals, but you know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, 7 p.m. on ACC Network. Man, this could be a good one. Number 18, 7-0 Pitt versus number 27-1 SMU. I say it could be a good one because both quarterbacks are hurt. Uh like we said, Pat Narduzzi's keeping a tight lip about whether or not Holstein's going to play. Uh, SMU, not sure if their quarterback's going to play. But if they both play, this could be a pretty good game. Uh, Pitt is better in the passing game, though. SMU is better in the rushing game. Uh, no late FBS games. That's it. 7 p.m. That's your that's your latest FBS game. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe they thought the World Series was going to go longer. I don't, I'm really not sure why. Uh, okay, 
On FCS, we got some FCS games. Friday, 6 p.m., ESPNU. Tonight, Yale versus Columbia, both 4-2. and two. Hey. Uh, Saturday, ESPN Plus, St. Thomas, Minnesota versus Moorhead State. Both are 5-3. and three. 12 p.m. on Flow, 6-2 and two Villanova versus 5-3 and three Hampton, uh, even in the passing and the rushing games. 12.30 on ESPN Plus, 5-1 and one Harvard versus 6-0 and oh Dartmouth. That could be a good one. Got a couple of good Ivy League games here this, this weekend. Uh, Harvard's better in the passing game. These teams are pretty even in the rushing game. Uh, 1 p.m. on Flow, 4-4 four four Towson versus 6-2 and two Richmond. They are even in the passing game. Richmond is better in the rushing game. Uh, 1.30 on ESPN Plus, 5-3 and three Chattanooga versus 4-4 four and four Western Carolina. Western Carolina quarterback Cole Gonzalez, 2,543 passing yards, 12 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. So, uh, 2 p.m. on ESPN Plus, 5-3 Eastern Tennessee State versus 7-1 Mercer. Both have great passing and rushing games. They could really be battling it out in this one. Uh, 3 p.m. on ESPN Plus, 5-3 Davidson versus 4-3 San Diego. Um, uh, San Diego quarterback uh, Grant Sargent, 15 touchdowns. Their running back Donaldson, uh, Davidson, I mean, sorry, Davidson's running back, Maury Adams, 13 rushing touchdowns in that one. 3 p.m. on ESPN Plus, 4-4 four four Southern Utah versus 5-3 Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian's quarterback, Mavic uh, Michael Lavar, 2,571 yards, 20 touchdowns, four interceptions. They really should create an FCS Heisman because some of these numbers these guys have been putting up over the last several years are just incredible. Uh, Southern, U Southern Utah running back, uh, Targi Lampson, 1,233 rushing yards, 14 touchdowns. 3 p.m. on ESPN Plus, 5-3 uh, Stephen F. Austin versus 4-4 four four Nichols State. Stephen F. Austin quarterback, Sam Vidlock, 2,125 passing yards, 23 touchdowns of three interceptions. See what I mean about the FCS Heisman? Um, 5 p.m. on ESPN+. 5-3 UT Martin versus 6-2 and two Tennessee State. Both good in the passing game. UT Martin a little better in the rushing game. 6 p.m. on ESPN+. 4-4 four four Eastern Kentucky versus 7-1 Tarleton State. Even in the passing game, Tarleton State is a little better in the rushing game. No late FCS good matchups like we've had the last three weeks. Like I said, it must be because they thought the World Series was going to go on longer than it did, but I don't know. Anyway, so that is it. And, uh, yeah, Friday, a few more hours, and we are done with this week. Uh, Y'all enjoy your weekend. Have fun. Um, we'll be back Sunday or Monday to uh, review everything, everything that happens from tonight until Saturday. Anyway, enjoy your weekend, have fun, stay safe. We will see you next time.